Justin Miller, Oxford College Physics here. What are we looking at today? The Doppler shift for sound. So let's just go ahead and discuss that a little bit first, and then we can go on and start to extract out some expressions that pertain to the Doppler shift. So, you ever been maybe sitting in your car and a police car, fire engine, or ambulance is coming up behind you, then it goes past you, and pulled over because they're supposed to, and what happens? Well, you hear the do 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 do. That's my impression of an ambulance. Ultimately, you hear a shift in the pitch of the sound as it comes towards you and then starts going away from you. There's a switch in the pitch, so to say. Or maybe a train car. Train's coming, you're stopped at the intersection. Ding, 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 ding. Here comes the train. With this little horn or race cars or whatever. You get this change in frequency. Airplanes flying over your head. What's that all about? And well, what's that all about is an apparent change in the perceived frequency due to relative motion between yourself and the source of sound. So that change in frequency or change in pitch is correlated with what is known as the Doppler shift. So the Doppler effect. We're going to stick with sound waves at this point. We can have Doppler shift for um, light waves as well. I'm just doing sound though. So what do we have here? So we're going to assume that we have some source of like spherical wavefronts. And let us first take into account that, or not take into account, but say that the source is stationary. So we've got the stationary source. Consider a source that is stationary. And producing sound. Of a singular frequency. Spherical wavefronts. So we've got some source here, right? Some little source of sound. And I just try it like that. You can figure that it's kind of oscillating with some frequency. And we'll try doing we'll do it like this. I'm gonna do little dash lines that are like the wavefronts, spherically radiating outward. Try to keep them same separation, so the wavelength would be the distance in between the source or the dashed lines themselves consecutively. One more. So we've got this sound that's radiating outward. At what rate? at the speed of sound. So let's spend the speed. We're just going to call that speed of sound V. So we're going to assume that we're in air here. It doesn't necessarily have to be, but that's it. So we've got that it's radially outward, and we're going to be over here. So let's we'll take like a nice little Straight line, and say that, you know what? You, or me, or somebody, is over here with their ear. And what do they do? They hear this sound. Eventually, these wave fronts reach their ear. I'm not going to draw them all out, but they hear the sound. They got their nice ear right there. Whew. They hear the sound, and the sound has a particular pitch. And the pitch, again, correlates with the specific frequency, which would be the frequency of the source. So if we have a source frequency, 
Now, if we stay stationary there, we perceive the same frequency that the source is producing. But if we start moving either towards the source or away from the source, we will perceive a different frequency, and thus we will hear a different pitch, even though the source frequency remains the same. So let us do this. I'm going to draw in a couple more wave fronts right here, um, just uh, kind of like this. The best wave fronts, but you can kind of get the picture there. And what's going to happen, we're going to say that we're going to be moving this way. Observer moving toward source with speed. I'm going to call it B sub O for the observer's speed. And this is towards the source. All right, so what's going to happen here? Well, we've got that these wave fronts continuously come in. They're traveling at the speed of sound. In air, 20 degrees Celsius, we'd say 343 meters per second. But they're traveling. The spatial separation between these wave fronts is defined as the wavelength. So if we wanted to, we could kind of draw that in and say, hey, the wavelength is that, that. The wavelength is something that's preserved. There's the wavelength of this wave. Again, that correlates with the frequency and the speed of sound because we know that F is equal to B divided by lambda, right? B is the speed of sound, F is the frequency being produced, and lambda is the wavelength of the wave. So what do we have here? Well, in our reference frame, if we're traveling that way, we come into contact at a faster rate with the wave fronts than if we're just standing still, right? The wave fronts come to our ear at a certain rate, 343 meters per second is the, uh, the rate that they're traveling forward. There's a certain period then, and hey, we time the arrival at our ear. But if we're moving forward, we actually come into contact with these wave fronts at a more rapid, rapid rate, we'll say, rapid pace. How much faster? Well, in our reference frame, or in the observer's frame, it is as if the wave speed is increased by an amount B sub zero. So it's like the wave speed is actually faster than it really is if we're traveling towards the source because we pass through these wave fronts at a more rapid rate and that's it. So this is what it seems like to us, or how we can sort of think about it. So what does this do? Well, let's see. Now the wavelength itself isn't something that's changing here, right? The wavelength's the wavelength, the spatial separation in between these wave fronts. We're just crossing them in a faster path because it seems like the speed of sound is faster than it actually is because of our motion towards the source. So if we come over here, we've got the perceived frequency by the observer is, we're going to call it F prime, let's not take in the derivative, we just call it something else, we'll call it F prime, and that's going to be equal to the speed of sound that is measured in their reference frame, so what it seems like. So we've got a V plus V sub O divided by the wavelength. All right, so what do we have? Well, again, wavelength stays the same, but it seems like in our frame that sound's actually traveling faster than it is, and this ultimately is responsible for producing a different perceived frequency. How do we make a connection between these two? 
Well, what's the same between them? Lambda's the same, right? It's the same wavelength, no matter if we're traveling really fast or really slow or standing still. That's just the spatial separation between the uh, wave fronts themselves. So what can we do with this? What happens if we go ahead and say we solve this out for lambda right here? So according to this, purple, according to this, we could write that lambda is equal to V divided by F. That's the source frequency and the true speed of sound in air. Now, what can we do with that? We can take this lambda and say, these lambdas are the same. This lambda has to be equal to that lambda. So with that, we've got that this then is equivalent to V plus V sub O, speed of sound in air plus the speed of the observer towards the source. Then divided by lambda, well the lambda is V divided by F prime. Excuse me, not F prime, oops. V divided by F. What can we do with that? We can rearrange things a little bit and say that now the perceived speaking frequency is related to the source frequency by, well, we just go ahead and say F prime is equal to, we'll go ahead and invert that and say that it's F times the factor of V plus V zero divided by V. So we got this. Let's use black here. F prime is equal to the quantity of V plus, I said V zero, but it's V sub O for observer, divided by V multiplied by F. So we take the source frequency and we multiply that source frequency by this factor right here and we've got the perceived frequency. That's it. There's the Doppler shift for a stationary source and an observer moving towards the source. What happens if the observer is moving away? And again, this is observer moving toward a stationary source. Observer is moving away. From the stationary source, the wave speed in the observer's frame. traveling that way, they're trying to catch up to us. And, well, assuming that we're not traveling um, faster than the speed of sound, so they can catch up to us, we've got ourselves, what? Well, we just have to subtract off how fast we're going. That's how fast it seems like the wave's traveling in our reference frame, or the observer's reference frame. So we would have that that speed is V minus O. So, we have the same sort of correlation here. The only difference is F prime is going to be V minus VO divided by lambda, which will give us the same expression except we have V minus VO. So, F prime is equal to the quantity of V minus VO divided by V multiplied by the source frequency. All right, so ultimately we've got down what happens if the source is stationary and we're moving either towards the source or away from the source. Now think about this, if you're moving towards the source, are you going to perceive a higher frequency, higher pitch, or a lower frequency? 
corresponding to a lower pitch. So let's see what this sort of says here. If you're moving towards a source that's stationary, and this is the numerator here, the numerator is larger, then we will have that this ratio here is greater than one, which says then that the frequency that you perceive is gonna be greater than the source frequency, which means that it's higher pitched. So you're moving towards the source, you perceive a higher pitch than the source actually has. You're moving away from the source, well, this fraction here becomes something that's less than one, and thus you have a fractional value of F for the perceived. So you hear something that's lower pitched. So in this case, F prime is a greater than F. Receive a higher pitch. And for this one, we've got that F prime is less than F. Which means we perceive a lower pitch. So maybe the true sound of the sound is something like, uh, there's the source frequency, you're traveling towards it, and it sounds like, uh, or you're traveling away from it, and it sounds like, uh, probably not. That, that um, large of a shift, but it really depends on how fast you're going. If we're just running, and hey, you probably don't even perceive it, the frequency shifts probably just a couple hertz, but, as you travel faster and faster towards the source or away from the source, you get a larger and larger discrepancy between the true source frequency and the frequency that you perceive. That's pretty cool. Top or shift. All right, so again, that is if the source is stationary. Let's look at if the source is moving towards the observer and the observer is stationary. So let's get rid of this here. Consider that. Just write that up here really quick. That. Now consider a stationary observer. source that moves toward the observer with a speed V sub S. All right, so this one gets a little bit harder to draw. This is what we've got going on though. So we've got this source that is producing these spherical wave fronts to travel outward at the speed of sound. That's great. But what we got to think about is this source is moving too. So the source has some speed, V sub S, which we're going to assume is less than the speed of sound. And what does it do? It makes a pulse right here, right? And that pulse starts spreading outward. Well, what's happening while that pulse is spreading outward? This source is still moving forward. So it produces another pulse where it has advanced some as the first pulse is still spreading outward. It produces another one. That one starts spreading outward and it advances even more. And what happens is that it's always moving toward the pulses going that way and moving away from the pulses that are going that way, right? So what's gonna happen? Well, it gets that the pulses on this side end up having spatial separations between the wave fronts that are greater than they would be if it was just stationary. And the pulses on this side, or the wave fronts on this side, get more squished together because it's producing, the source is producing those wave fronts as it's traveling towards the wave front that's been produced, the previous one. So what you end up getting is, I don't really, this would be like a snapshot kind of get this, where it's maybe not grand with this last one, 
something like this, where here, you still have that there are these spherical waveforms traveling out, but they're traveling outward from where they were produced. So this is moving forward, thus this wavefront here, this interior one was produced here, this very outer one was produced we'll say like here, and here, something like that. Let's not even draw those in, because this isn't drawn out perfectly. That's it. So the main thing is that the wavelength has physically been changed, been changed in the direction that it's moving, and the opposite direction as well. We're only concerned really at this point with being, having it moving towards us. So we're over here. Doo, doo, doo. There's our ear. Got a little, we're happy. Of course we are. And these wave fronts are coming. Well, this is the spatial separation in between them now. And actually, we should stick with being right in line with us. So maybe we want to put our ear down here. Ah, that's okay. That's a crazy ear. Anyways, what do we have? A shift in the actual wavelength. So, how do we deal with this? Well, we still go back and think about some things. The wave speed isn't changing. We still perceive the wave speed as being V, the speed of sound and air. But perceiving the wave, the wavelength to be different than what it would be if the source was stationary. So we have that F, the frequency of the source, is correlated with the speed of sound and air and the wavelength if it were stationary. And then we've got over here, the perceived frequency, F prime is going to be equal to well, V divided by, well, we don't want to call it, we call these lambda prime, actually. We don't want to call it lambda, we don't want to call it lambda prime. So here, source or stationary. between these two lambdas. The wave speed's the same. That's not changing. It's just how we measure the wavelength. It seems different. So what do we get with this? Well, notice that the wavelength's smaller, right? How much smaller is it going to be from what it would be if the source were not moving? Well, that again depends on how fast the source is moving and, well, I'm really the frequency or the period of the, uh, of the source as well. So we have to have that lambda prime is equal to some lambda minus delta lambda. There's the change in wavelength. So the question ultimately becomes, what is that delta lambda? Well, the delta lambda depends on the speed of the source. That's it. We could go over and say, well, delta lambda itself, that shift, can be re-correlated with this right here. But instead of just V, now it's V sub S. So we have that this is going to be equal to V sub S times the period of the wave, but the period is the inverse of the frequency. So we've got that delta lambda is equal to V sub S divided by F. Hmm. That's interesting, right? 
Well, yeah. yeah, it is, because we can also write that lambda itself is v divided by f. From this, lambda is equal to v divided by the actual source frequency. v divided by f, v sub s divided by f is the change, where the original wavelength was just the wave speed divided by the source frequency. All right, so what does this all spell out here? Put it on over here, see what we get out of it. So we've got F prime is equal to V divided by lambda prime, and a lambda prime is lambda minus delta lambda, and delta lambda is V sub S divided by F, and lambda itself is V divided by F. So we'll write this out in a couple of steps. Write this is lambda divided by delta lambda, which is then equal to V divided by, again, lambda is V over F, and delta lambda is V sub S over F, so minus V sub S over F. Common denominator there, F, we ultimately invert that, multiply by F, and we've got ourselves the F prime, the perceived frequency, is going to be the quantity of V divided by V minus V times the source velocity multiplied by F. There we go. Source moving toward the observer. Source frequency, perceived frequency by the observer. So we go back and we say, well, what happens, right? What happens? Well, if the source is moving towards the observer, is the observer going to perceive a higher pitch or a lower pitch, higher frequency or lower frequency? So what's gonna happen? We take V and subtract this off. This number here becomes a larger number divided by a smaller number, which then is greater than one, right? Something greater than one multiplied by F gives us higher frequency. F prime is greater than F. Higher perceived frequency by the observer. Conversely to that, we could also have the source moving away from the observer. How do we do that? Well, if we just come over here and say, you know what, let's just put the observer over here. Actually, his ear should be down there, so maybe he's laying down. Anyways, source moving away. that lambda prime will be equal to lambda plus the delta lambda, plus some change where that change is correlated with the speed of the source and the period of the wave itself. And thus we have that F prime will be equal to V divided by V plus V sub S, V divided by V plus V sub S times F. So there's if the source is moving away, and we've got that F prime then would be less than F perceived lower frequency. All right, so we've looked at two ends really here. Source is stationary, observer is moving towards our way, and the observer is stationary and the source is moving towards our way. We got two different expressions here. So what we want to do is be able to put those together and just have one overall expression that we can utilize for any of those cases. Motion towards, motion away. The observer and the source could be moving towards each other. The observer could be running away from the source. The source could be moving in the opposite direction of the observer, them going away from one another. And that all has consequential motion um, between the source and the observer that needs to be taken into account to fully discern what the observed frequency is comparative to the source frequency. So 
what ends up happening is well, we just take them. We take them both. We've got motion towards, motion away of both the source and the observer that can be taken into account. And whew, how does that happen? Well, we just start adding some things together here. And what ends up happening, I'll shortcut this a little bit. Just right. If both the source and observer are moving relative to one another, sub O divided by V minus V sub S multiplied by F. So if we look at this top and we just say, hey, the source is stationary, we got the V plus VO divided by V, which was what we said would be the case if the source, excuse me, yeah, as if the observer, excuse me, was moving towards the source with velocity V. V0, excuse me. Now, if the observer was stationary, we get this, and say the source is moving towards the observer that's stationary, and we've got this, which was that expression right there. This deals with both of them, but you may say, well, that's only if one's moving towards the other. And while that is kind of true, what we do is come up with a nice little sign convention that then allows us to use these for both motion towards and emotion away. Excuse me, not if. V sub S and V sub O can be positive or negative here. So that this expression can be used to positive for motion toward and V sub S and or V sub O are negative for motion away. And that's toward and away from the other. So we can have that one's positive and one's negative. Maybe the source is moving towards the observer, but the observer is moving away from the source. Source is moving towards, V sub S would be considered positive. Observer is moving away, V sub O would be considered to be negative. We can have that they're both positive. The source is moving towards the observer and the observer is moving towards the source. We could have that they're both negative, they're both moving away from each other. Or we could have that the observer's is positive, it's moving towards the source, and the source is moving away from the observer. So the source's velocity or speed is considered a negative value. And given those sort of sign conventions here, this is the expression that we utilize for overall Doppler shifts regarding sound and relative motion between the source and the observer. Something that should be pointing out, this is, these speeds here, VO and VS, are only the speeds in line between the observer and the source. So if we have that one is traveling this way and the other stays right above it but it's traveling upward too, 
the traveling this way with it doesn't do anything. The component of motion that is, um, I should say, perpendicular to the uh, to the ship being under investigation is not relevant. So it's only the the inline motion, inline relative motion. I said that a little bit weird, but. So if one's, say, stationary and the other's moving up, we don't just want to say, hey, it's speed up is its speed relative to this. We would have to take out the component that is in line with its motion relative to this. So it's a little bit more subtle. It's not just up. We have to figure out how that correlates with the relative motion between them. Anyways, that's, uh, that's basically that. For this class, we keep things in line, so keep it on the simple field here. So what we'll do is yeah, leave it at that. We we'll come back do a little problem with this, but top of ship's cool. Next time you hear a train, a plane, start thinking about it. Why do you get that shift in frequency? When it's coming towards you, it has one frequency. You just perceive it for whatever it is. It's traveling at a constant rate. But then all of a sudden, there's this turning point when it goes from going towards you to going away from you. That's where you hear that shift. So, and you get these two different extremes of the frequency and this turning point due to it switching from traveling towards to traveling away. While it's just traveling towards you, you don't perceive any shift. You just hear it, but you're hearing a different frequency than it's actually producing. Pretty cool, pretty cool stuff. That's it for now, and uh, be well.